Black holes are dangerous because they devour everything in their path from enormous stars to dust to stray spaceships. Due to their insatiable hunger, they even consume light. Yet there is a polar opposite to black holes, and they are just as terrifying. These enormous objects, known as white holes, have sparked a lot of interest in the astronomy community since their discovery. Here, we'll explore the origins of white holes, how they transform the world, and how they might change everything. The most typical black holes are deadly because if you come too close to them, you'll disappear into their interior. When the core of an extremely massive star collapses in on itself, a stellar black hole is created. A supernova or exploding star is another result of this collapse. It launches stellar material into the void. Most galaxies, including our own Milky Way, are thought to harbor a supermassive black hole at their centers. And the magnitude of this black hole is thought to be proportional to the mass and size of its host galaxy. The Sagittarius, a star often known as a black hole at the heart of our galaxy, may easily consume 4 million of our suns. However, we were not close enough for it to swallow as a whole. Black holes' powerful gravitational pull on nearby objects results from the compression of an extremely large mass into a comparatively small volume. Yes, exploding stars are dying stars. No, the sun will never become black holes since it isn't massive enough to undergo this compression as it winds down its existence. As soon as it reaches red giant status, the star will begin to turn into a planetary nebula, a brilliant ring of gas. At last, the sun will cool down to a white dwarf star. A black hole can't be observed directly like a star can, yet its presence is nevertheless felt by those around them. The first method we can identify black holes is through their gravitational pull. For instance, the black hole at the center of the Milky Way creates a gaping hole around which the rest of the galaxy's stars orbit. The second involves watching the matter that is being sucked into the black hole. This material eventually settles in a disk surrounded the black hole, which can get very hot. This disk converts some of the energy released by the falling matter into light, which can be seen in X-rays. Imagine that you can turn a black hole around. Deep space is a scary place with a lot going on at the same time, so white holes, which are the opposite of black holes, grab nothing. A white hole is the opposite of a black hole in theory. As we've already said, once matter reaches the event horizon of a black hole, it can't get away from the black hole's strong gravitational pull. In the same way, a white hole is a place where space-time flows outwards inexorably. It is thought to have an event horizon radius that prevents any matter, including light, from getting in. Because of this, people think that white holes send out light with the same amount of force as a black hole. The mathematical fascination with black holes led to the idea of white holes. 1905, Albert Einstein found that observers moving at a constant speed or standing still do not experience time in the same way as observers moving at a constant speed. He also found out that the speed of light is the same no matter what else is moving. Einstein then published his theory of general relativity, which says that things with mass have gravity, and that gravity is not a real force, but a warping of time and space. Carl Schwarzschild went even further with Einstein's field equations and used them to solve the equation of mass in empty space-time, or an area with no matter at all. This is how the Schwarzschild metric came to be. The equation itself is very complicated, but it's just a way to show what a black hole looks like in math. But the black hole in Schwarzschild's equation is not charged and doesn't change. This type of black hole is called an eternal black hole because its size doesn't change and it has always been there. As we've already said, everything that happens beyond the event horizon happens an infinitely long time from now. So from the outside, it looks like these things never happen. The Schwarzschild metric tells us that in an ideal black hole, space becomes time and time becomes space, swapping places so that the singularity of the black hole is in the future and not in the place. Now, if you try to go back in time in a real black hole, you will see a star that is dying. But if we turn a black hole around, we get a white hole. Why do white holes exist? Researchers think that black holes and white holes are linked, with matter and energy that fall into a black hole possibly coming out of a white hole somewhere else in the universe, or in a whole different universe. Carlo Rovelli and his colleagues in France thought that black holes and white holes might be linked in another way. They thought that when black holes die, they might change into white holes. 
Stephen Hawking, a theorist in physics, figured out in 1970s that all black holes should lose mass by giving off radiation. People think that black holes that lose more mass than they gain will shrink and eventually disappear. But Robelli and his colleagues thought that shrinking black holes couldn't go away if space and time were made of quanta, which are small amounts that can't be divided. Quantum research tries to combine general relativity, which can explain how gravity works, and quantum mechanics, which can explain how all known particles behave, into a single theory that can explain all the forces in the universe. In 2014, study Rovelli and his team said, Once a black hole evaporated to the point where it couldn't shrink anymore because space-time couldn't get any smaller, the dying black hole would then rebound to form a white hole. However, the process of a black hole turning into a white hole is not a quick one. Rovelli thought that it would take a black hole with the same mass as the sun about a quadrillion times the age of the universe to turn into a white hole. Aside from that, this theory says that white holes can't be made directly, unlike black holes, which are made when stars die. Other theories say that white holes started to form just a second after the Big Bang, when random changes in density happened in the hot, quickly expanding universe. According to the school of thought, areas where these fluctuations gathered a lot of matter together could have collapsed to make black holes. These primordial black holes would have been much smaller than stellar mass black holes and could have died to make white holes within the lifetime of the universe. Robelli and his colleagues pointed out, For now, white holes are only a theory, but that doesn't mean that the science that led to their discovery is wrong. At any rate, black holes were once just an idea. Since then, they have not only been proven to exist, but they have also been found all over the universe that we can see. The fact that the universe is expanding is one of the most mysterious things in the universe. We know for sure that the universe is growing, but we don't know why. Like other invisible things in the universe and in science, we think it's because of something called dark energy. The expansion of the universe is one way that this mysterious, invisible force we call dark energy can be seen to have an effect on other natural things we can see. Could white holes have something to do with this mystery that keeps growing? Could they have something to do with dark energy? Could it be that while the force of black holes is trying to bring this universe together, the force of white holes is actively trying to push the universe apart? Or is the answer to this mathematical riddle about the universe something even crazier, since the truth is often stranger than fiction? Some scientists say white holes aren't real, but the idea could solve a number of problems in physics. The first problem to be solved is the black hole information paradox, which says that information going into a black hole would disappear completely when the black hole died because it evaporated into nothing. However, information is supposed to be violet and can't be destroyed completely. Quantum bounces would be a great way to solve this problem. When a black hole turns into a white hole, all of the information it holds would just come out. Does this mean that, in theory, life can be restored for someone who has been swallowed by a black hole? No, we really don't think you should try to test this. But white holes could be a key to understanding the nature of dark matter. Another difficult concept for theorists to solve is the existence of dark matter, which is invisible, but is responsible for the observed cohesion of various cosmological regions. A known material that doesn't interact with light or any other known natural force besides gravity. A 2018 paper suggested that white holes fit the description of this hard to detect and are made of a mysterious kind of matter, leading to intriguing possibility of white holes might make up a large portion, if not all, all of the dark stuff. The origins of white holes are, at their core, obscure. Remember that Einstein's equations only describe the possibility of white holes, not their formation. Let's hear what you think of white holes in the comments section below, and if you like this video, consider subscribing to our channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you can get updates on new informational videos. That's all for now, we'll see you in the next video.